I'm oral historian Mike Chappelle. Today, June 24th, 2012, I'm interviewing Dr. Roger Unger for the Endocrine Society at its annual meeting being held this year at the George R. Brown Convention Center in Houston, Texas. Insulin will respond to a rise or a fall of glucose by controlling the glucagon level. So together, they release a mixture of insulin and glucagon that oppose each other's action on the liver that's appropriate for the glucose level. In a type 1 diabetic, you have no beta cells in the islets. The only insulin that's available to the alpha cells is what you inject. Now, there's no way on God's earth that you can inject enough insulin to match what's locally secreted by beta cells that are right next to the alpha cell. These alpha cells are going to get uh, probably more than 100 times as much insulin as they will get from a peripheral injection. So we thought that was the reason for the roller coaster behavior of the glucose levels. And when we suppress the glucagon level, the roller coaster uh, became flatter, no matter how we suppressed it. So we uh, decided that the way to improve the treatment of type 1 diabetes is to reduce the insulin levels to physiologic levels so you no longer get hypoglycemia. That's going to let the glucagon go higher and make the hyperglycemia worse. So you have to suppress the glucagon with something other than insulin. When you do that, you get a perfectly flat glucose curve. And that's what I presented today. In 1994, at Rockefeller University, Jeff Friedman discovered leptin. And uh, we began studying leptin. And then, by an accident of fate, for reasons that had nothing to do with the treatment of type 1 diabetes, we injected an adenovirus containing the leptin cDNA into a severely ill type 1 diabetic who was almost ready to die. And unless we gave him insulin. But the animal, after the injection with the leptin-containing virus, uh, became normal, as if we'd given him insulin. And we looked at the blood to see if there was any insulin. There was none. The animal has absolutely no insulin, and yet he was thriving. So we repeated this several times, switched back to the original study that had been suspended for 30 years, and uh, to our amazement, we couldn't believe this because we had all been trained to believe that life without insulin is not possible. And there was no insulin in these animals. They thrived with no treatment for uh, almost a year. So this was with adenovirally delivered leptin. We repeated it with uh, infusion of the leptin protein, we got the same results. And uh, we found that leptin was a much better suppressor of glucagon than somatostatin. Didn't have the side effects. Now, since the leptin study, we've identified nine or 10 other hormones that do the same thing. Some as good as uh, leptin, some not as good. And the most exciting thing is that there may now be on the horizon, thanks to work being conducted by uh, two of our collaborators at UT Southwestern, Mike Roth and Matt Evans, uh, that an orally administrable uh, glucagon suppressor is a possibility. In fact, there's one out there now uh, studied at the University of Toronto by Dr. Wang. Uh, it's uh, gamma amino 
butyric acid, a neurotransmitter, can be given by mouth, and it suppresses glucagon and reduces the glucose levels in type 1 diabetic rodents. So we're very hopeful that a new era in the management of type 1 diabetes uh, may be looming. I'm a little superstitious and I don't want to jinx it with any uh, further predictions. <clears throat>